Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father Abba, we thank you for your word and thank you for allowing us to understand these hidden messages that are helping us to become the children you would have us to be in these last and trepidous days. In your son's name we pray, amen. Amen. And so be it. Shalom, everybody. It's Stacy, and we have Coach with us. Hey, y'all. So today we're going to be continuing on in our mini-series in the book of Hermas from the section Vision 3. Vision 3. And today we will be starting our lesson on verse 77. Yeah, guys, if this is the first class you've seen, you may want to jump over and look at the other classes that we've done. You've missed um, about 76 verses out of this series here. We're going to continue, Lord willing, covering every verse in this chapter called uh, Visions 3. But, like I said, you've missed a lot if you haven't seen those other ones. So I would suggest you maybe go over and look at those first. Okay. So I, Stacy, will be your reader today, along with Coach, who will expound on the lessons. Yeah, Lord willing, he'll give me something to say about them. We'll see. We've been reading and covering the book of Hermes for a while now. So um, I don't want to say that we are experts on it, but the Lord has given us a lot out of Hermes and we have applied it not only to our lives, but we have taught about it. So I think actually the teaching of it is what has made us more knowledgeable about it than anything else. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess the old saying is true. You remember 5% of what you hear, 15% of what you read, and 70% of what you teach. Yeah, and yeah, teaching has definitely um, helped me in learning many, many of these lessons covered here in Hermes. And remember that this is a ministry, this book of the Shepherd of Hermas, because we're going to see here not too shortly that she's going to give Hermas and the rest of us a commission to go out and actually teach this book. And that's why we have a such thing as Hermas Academy. That's why it even exists, because we are following what the scripture says and actually teaching this book just like it says, tells us to do. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, do we want to go ahead and start? Well, let's get started. Verse 77. Thus, she finished the explanation of the tower. Yep, so she's given Hermes the vision of the tower, and she's actually gone in and explained the tower to him. You find those in the first uh, classes that we've done, the first parts of this series. 78. But I, being still urgent, asked her, is there repentance allowed to all those stones which are thus cast away and were not suitable to the building of the tower? And shall they find place in this tower? So I believe Hermes is talking about all the stones here. He's not just talking about the ones who are set beside the tower. Um, remember their flaws were expected to be polished away and they would then be allowed in the tower. But the way he uses the word cast away, I'm thinking he's talking about those who were... Uh, cast even out into the highways and in the desert places yeah though we have uh, we know of people and we have um, association with folks that are hard-headed rebellious we still want them to be a part of the kingdom now uh, so what about those who were thrown into the fire those are the what we believe to be the blasphemous ones and um, we are, yeah, it, yeah we still have this grain of hope that the Father will accept them as well. All right, we have this hope, but I'm thinking that's what that fire represented, is there is no coming back. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. fire is a chemical change. When something goes through the fire, it's chemically changed, mm -hmm. and it'll never go back to being what it used to be, unless, of course, it's gold or silver. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it'll come out even better than when it went in. Refined, yeah. 79. They may repent, said she, but they cannot come into this tower. But they shall be placed in a much lower rank, and this after that they shall have been afflicted and fulfill the days of their sins. Well, now I believe he's answering a question here. You see how he's talking about cast into a much lower rank? Yeah. I'm wondering, okay, 
I guess to me this actually means that they will actually be part of the courtyard opposed to the tower. Mm -hmm. You know, this temple compound will be made up of this tower-shaped temple. We call it the third temple, but the temple also has this courtyard that I believe will be made up of that multitude that no man can number. So that's possibly who it could be talking about here. Right, because even in the um, example of the tabernacle, only the priests and the uh, workers were able to go into the temple, but it was those who, um, I guess you would just the common folks, were allowed in the courtyard. Yeah, that's right. So um, that will be a inferior place, but is better than nothing. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but then notice how it says, and then only after they shall have been afflicted yeah. and fulfilled the days of their sins. Yeah, it seems like we can't get around the suffering that we're going to have to go through. Yeah, and sorry to say, guys, you know, this is not really taught in the churches like it should be that we all have to go through something. You know, if you if you if you put a minister on the spot, sure he will agree to it, but is he ever going to get behind the pulpit and explain to us that we're all going to have to go through these tribulations if we ever want to see the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 80. And for this cause they shall be removed because they have received the word of righteousness, and then they shall be translated from their afflictions. If they shall have a true sense in their hearts of what they have done amiss. See, now I'm a little bit on the fence here as, as to who he's talking about. Is he talking about this affliction in the spirit? Or is he talking about this affliction in the flesh? Or is he talking about a combination of the two? Mm. Because not only are we going to go through this tribulation and it's going to be an affliction to the flesh for anybody who survives it, yeah. those that actually go into the spirit world are actually going to go through affliction too. Right. You know, you read over the book of Revelation when it says, Blessed is he who dies in the name of the Lord from this day forward. Mm -hmm. To me, that's talking about some type of change in the spirit world. Whereas our grandparents, when they died, they only really stayed in the spirit world for a short period of time before they were awakened and then allowed to come back here to earth to start all over again. Mm -hmm. What it appears to me is that there's coming a day when there's actually going to be this torture and this torment that we hear about that people refer to as hell. Right. Like you're going to be faced with your conscience mm -hmm. and then you're going to be tormented where it's not just going to be a short respite period in right. the spirit world, but it's got going to be in a period. It's going to be a longer period of affliction and torture by way of your conscience. And then you will be allowed to come back to the earth. It seems as if it could be talking about both. Very well. So. Mm -hmm. 81. But if they shall not have this sense in their hearts, they shall not be saved by reason of the hardness of their hearts. Yeah, so, you know, you can imagine there are those in the spirit world, just like there are those in the flesh, who are not going to be repentant. They're never, they're, I ain't going to say never, you know, we will all eventually make it to the kingdom of heaven. But, you know, we do hear about the lake of fire, mm -hmm. which, you know, could, for some people, it will last for a thousand years where they are in torture and torment in the spirit world. It's sad to say that, um, I guess some people are going to have to, um, be refined by the lake of fire. Yeah, you know, some people are just in that bad of a shape, yeah, that it's going to take, you know, that long to uh, make up for their transgressions. And you could imagine, you know, some of the false prophets, um, some of those lying spirits, some of those lying prophets who have not only led themselves astray and their families astray, but have led thousands, maybe even tens of thousands or millions of people astray by their ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, how bad is it for those guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be because we understand that every stain on our spirit, every lie that we've told, even every bad thought that we've had has to be accounted for, has to be made up for. Yeah, you know, the scripture tells us that everyone should not be uh, ministers, preachers, leaders, mm -hmm. because of, um, I guess, every, people, a lot of people are fallible to just, they just don't want it or even don't even know how to do it right. Yeah, and then, you know, there's so many people who 
who would otherwise want to do things correctly may hear a misplaced word and end up going the wrong direction completely mm -hmm. and end up themselves in the leg of fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess that's why we hear that, you know, so much that the teachers will be held accountable. Yeah. And we really need to be very careful. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's a it's a big responsibility to be a teacher. Um, so, yeah, everybody should or even want to um, be that. 82. When therefore I had done asking her concerning all these things, she said unto me, Will thou see somewhat else? And being desirous to seeing it, I became very cheerful of countenance. So here he's about to see a different side of the same vision. Now, I keep referring you guys to similitudes because in similitudes, these two portions that we're actually seeing here are actually put together in one vision. He's gonna, she's going to talk to him about these women about the tower. We know them as the virgins or right. the virtues, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but, you know, like over in Similitude 9, um, when it's explained to Hermes, he actually sees them um, and the role that they'll play, you know, throughout the vision. Right. 83. She therefore, looking back upon me and smiling a little, said unto me, See thou seven women about the tower? Lady, said I. I see them. Now, this is a little bit of a difference between what we see over in Similitudes because in Similitudes, there's 12 of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not every one of them is listed. And, you know, we have went in and we've compared to see, you know, what's the difference between, you know, the seven that's listed here and the 12 that's listed over there. Matter of fact, I'll give you guys a glimpse of them when we get down to that verse. Mm hmm. 84. This tower, replied she, is supported by them, according to the command of the Lord. Hear, therefore, the effects of them. So he's talking about these women here, and these women are extremely important to the understanding of this story. These are probably the main characters as far as we're concerned because they have the most direct effect on us. Mm -hmm. You know, we have these, you know, six angels followed by these thousand angels who are carrying these stones, carrying everybody, you know, and, you know, if you're thinking about this from a materialistic viewpoint, you can think maybe you're only going to be touched by one of these venerable angels for a short period of time as he brings your stone in and puts it in the tower. But as far as these women that he's about to talk about, we're going to spend a long time with every one of these women yeah. as we purify ourselves and make ourselves ready for this tower. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're very, they're very, very important. 85. The first of them which holds fast with her hand is called faith. By her the elect shall be saved. The next which is girt up and looks manly is named abstinence. She is the daughter of faith. So here is where we may actually consider breaking out a pencil and a piece of paper and writing these names down because for one we want to um, go in and look at the definitions to these words to make sure we fully understand who they are, not being presumptuous and assuming that we know what faith is and what abstinence is and the rest of these women. And secondly, you know, like I said, we want to compare these to the ones that we see over there in uh, Similitudes 9. Matter of fact, let me jump over there and see that right quick. Okay, now here we're over in Similitudes 9 um, in verse 142 when he's naming these virgins. And I keep pointing and saying how, you know, Similitudes 9 is just the same story in more detail. Um, here's an example of that. We see them listed as faith, countenance, power, patience, simplicity, innocence, chastity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, and charity. And again, I would suggest that you write these down, but there's even one more place that I want to show you guys before we get back over into the visions, and that's actually the full armor of God. Like we see over here in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, this is where we hear about the full armor of God. 
But the thing about it, if you compare these virgins or these virtues that we hear about, you see that they actually line up pretty close, if not being the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I think this is Paul referencing the shepherd of Hermes just like Peter did, except Paul is actually describing the, uh, the virgins or the virtues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see right there in uh, verse 11, it's talking about the whole armor of God. And in verse 12, you see how it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Right. Well, if we jump back over to the shepherd of Hermes and we look down in uh, verse 144 and 145, we actually see who these powers are that he's actually talking about. Right. We know them as perfidiciousness, incontinence, infidelity, and pleasure as well as sadness, malice, lust, anger, lying, foolishness, pride, and hatred. These are the powers that actually control and manipulate man into his own destruction. Mm -hmm. When the book of Revelation and other places is talking about Michael fighting against the dragon, here are the dragon that he's actually fighting against. This is a war that's going on inside of our own spirit, inside of our own conscience, or inside of our own minds and hearts. But it is these individuals that's actually been exterminated from our character, making us fit to go into this tower. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, we come back over and we look at Ephesians, and we see that our loins are girt about with the truth, and having a breastplate of righteousness, it says that our feet are shard with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Then in 16, it says, above all, taking the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And then in verse 17, it's talking about the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Well, I believe it's easy to see. These over here listed in these virtues, especially when we understand the full definition of who they are. Yeah. But now back over here in Visions 3, in verse 85, notice how it's giving them, he said, the first of them is called faith. And then the next one is abstinence, which is the daughter of faith. Yeah. And then he's going to go on to show us how each of these are the daughter of one another. And I've done this before. This is a third reason why we want to write this down is because we can see how they are the daughter of one another. Yeah. Like, for instance, what this is saying is once you have faith in the word of God, in our father, then from that faith will start to get abstinence. And that's the way the rest of these seven are going to follow one another as if they are born from one another. Right. But let's go on to 86. Whosoever therefore shall follow her shall be happy in all their life, because he shall abstain from all evil works. Believing, if he shall contain himself from concupiscence, he shall be the heir of eternal life. And what, lady, said I, are the other five? So he's talking about this abstinence here. But again, you're not going to have abstinence without this faith mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. But once you have abstinence... Then what does it say? Because he shall abstain from all evil works. Right. You know, and that includes our bad thoughts. Yeah. That includes, you know, anything that breaks the covenant or the yeah. laws. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's like um, one feeds off the other. Exactly. Mm hmm. 87. They are, replied she, the daughters of one another. The first of them is called simplicity. The next, innocence. The third, modesty. Then, discipline. And the last of all is charity. When, therefore, thou shalt have fulfilled the works of their mother, thou shalt be able to do all things. So, these are the virtues that we'll, we will have to put on if we ever plan on going into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. This would actually be considered part of our good works. Mm -hmm. You know, actually having discipline and charity and modesty and innocence. Yeah, simplicity, yeah. These are these are actual uh, physical things that you can do. Yeah, definitely. And like we said, we have to 
there will be nobody in the kingdom of heaven that doesn't have these virtues. No, because when we um, when we get to the book of similitudes, we will see how the um, angel Michael, I believe, commands the virgins not to let anybody in that tower. Uh, he warns them very strictly: don't let nobody through that tower. Uh, without coming by you. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's important to understand in this part here because he, Hermes is seeing these these virtues for the first time in the form of women. Mm -hmm. And the, like Stacy says, these women are charged with ensuring that we are properly prepared to enter this tower. We're not going to be able to get past these women. Mm -hmm. In fact, they have opposite counterparts like we saw over there in similitudes who will be called in to escort us mm -hmm. back to the place where they found us at happily escort you. <laughs> happily escort <laughs> us back there to the bad place from which we came from right you know if it's a place of hatred if it's a place of lying you know then we're going to go not only are we going to back go back to lion town but all of those other powers are going to come in to visit us from time to time, mm -hmm. like we said, to basically to destroy us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the book of Daniel says, the wicked will do wickedly. Well, those who like lion not only will have the spirit of lion to take them over, but they're going to have those other wicked powers to take them over as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 88. Lady said I... I would know what particular virtue every one of these has. Now, again, Hermes is great. He's the best one to actually do this because, you know, he, he asking questions here. You know, mm -hmm. some of us would have just, you know, heard these and be like, OK, I got it. You know, I'm good. But, you know, Hermes is like, um, what are the what are the particular virtues of these women? What, what, what does that all mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eighty nine. Here then replies she. They have equal virtues, and their virtues are knit together and follow one another as they were born. Yep, so notice that part that they work together. These mm -hmm. come as a group, as a set. Yeah. So we can't just say, you know, I'm going to uh, have innocency, but I'm not going to have charity. Right. You know, I'm going to have discipline, but not modesty. Right. They, they come as a group. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you take one, you got to take them all. Yeah. If you lose one, you lose them all. You <laughs> lose them all, right. 90. From faith proceeds abstinence. From abstinence, simplicity. From simplicity, innocence. From innocence, modesty. From modesty, discipline and charity. Therefore, the works of these are holy and chaste and right. Yeah. So, like I said, I, I, when I analyzed this verse right here, um, scientifically, I mean, just sitting there looking at it, how are you getting abstinence from faith? Right. You know, how is it possible? And when you think about it, you know, it, it makes sense. How are you getting simplicity from abstinence? Mm -hmm. Well, you're putting away, yeah. you know, certain things. Right. You, you know, mm -hmm. abstaining from the evil makes you more of a simple person. Right. Which mm -hmm. leads to your innocence. Right. Right. And they, it, it just works hand in hand. You, you guys, you know, Pause the video or, you know, come back to your notes after the end of the video, but actually spend some time thinking about how does discipline come out of modesty and how does modesty breed charity? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it'll make sense. Yeah, it's it been a while since sense. I've done it. but Yeah, because take, for instance, innocent. You have to be uh, somewhat innocent to be able to take on modesty. And, you know, take, for instance, you take the um, the wedding day. The bride dressed in white, the innocence, yet and still she is modest. So it, it, it feeds off one another and it totally makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But notice how they they, they uh, are created from one another. Like we've been saying, you know, if, if you break this chain, you know, it's all going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's like the weakest link thing they talk about. If your modesty is not intact, if you're an arrogant individual, well, you can forget about discipline and, cha and charity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you kind of halt it. You like get your own stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoever, therefore, shall serve these and hold fast to their works, he shall have his dwelling in the tower with the saints of God. So this is how the tower is actually built. You have these women, these seven women, who are 
not only are they carrying us, we, we see in the vision how they actually carry the stones. The angels give the stones over to the virgins, and the virgins are the ones who actually put them in the tower. Well, this carrying process lasts for years. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I can I felt myself first being carried by this these women back there in about 2017 and 2019. Uh, 2018 but it wasn't until 2019 and 2020 that I started feeling myself actually um, having been improved by them the changed yeah. yeah changed yeah mm -hmm. it's a process because I used to be a very angry dude yeah you know and you find out that you know anger comes from a lack of patience mm -hmm. you know with, with 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 people and so it is a learning process and each of us has to be corrected by these virtues yeah mm -hmm. 92 then I asked her concerning the times whether the end were now at hand so here's a bit of a change here but we're going to continue on um, Hermes is saying, okay, wait a minute, um, are, are we at the end of the, this period here? Now, we remember in the earlier cat class that she told Hermes that this vision that he was seeing has already been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And then over in Similitudes, we hear that there was a break in the tower, right? Mm -hmm. And so it may take a little bit of thought, especially if you, you know, just getting into this book but we see here in all of this we can actually see the chronology of the tribulation when you look very closely you can actually figure out the timeline of the tribulation from the shepherd of Hermes wow. mm -hmm. yeah I believe that yeah definitely you can't really do it from visions but you know from um, similar to nine you you can actually see you know when these events take place when yeah. was the break in the building mm -hmm. you know they we call that the church age yeah you know mm -hmm. you can see when the building process started again you know no, understanding that you know we as of in about 2017 actually started going into this tower mm -hmm. and or or being prepared to go into this tower and here now you know, we are getting close to the point where this tower is about to be finished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it only has a few years to go and this tower is going to be done. So we really need to be, you know, taking on these virtues. So, you know, before those doors close, we can actually be in there with these guys. Yeah. 94. But do not ask me any more questions. What has been said may suffice thee and all the saints for the refreshment of your spirits. For these things have not been revealed to thee only, but that thou mayest make them manifest unto all. Now, again, this is talking about the ministry here, and he's talking to you guys that's actually listening to this. One of the reasons why you are hearing this now is so that you can start ministering um, here um, in the future. You, we're going to see in verse 95 that he's that he's actually going to get the commission to go out and to teach these things to the rest of the people. And like I said often, that's actually how this Hermes Academy thing got started. Mm -hmm. You know, it got started in 2018, three years after Hermes was brought to my attention again for the first time in many years in 2015. 95. For, therefore, O Hermes, after three days... You must understand these words which I began to speak unto you, that you may speak them in the ears of the saints, that when they shall have heard and done them, they may be cleansed from their iniquities, and you together with them. Now, this is a very important verse here. You know, I probably could do an entire class on what we're seeing here in this verse here. You know, I'll actually save that for another one, but mm -hmm. let's break it down a little. Let's unpack it a little bit here. He's, she's saying, O Hermes, after three days you must understand these words which I begin to speak unto you. So three years from the first time you actually hear this message, it's going to take that long for you to actually understand what's being taught here. Because when it says days, it actually means years. It's talking about years. And from my own personal experience, from the time that these virgins actually get a hold on you and start actually training you, it's actually going to take three years. Hmm. It's going to take three years of, of molding and shaping you into something that can even think about being presentable to the kingdom of heaven. 
And that's running close to the time that we believe that uh, things will start wrapping up, right? That's, I believe why the Father has us doing this class now, because this may be the last of the recruits to get this opportunity. After three days, and you start to understand this from a practical standpoint, not just words on a paper. Like I said in the other classes, I read this book back there in 1998, and a lot of times since, but it was only reading. You know, it, it wasn't taking the time to actually allow these women to have a hold on me. Mm -hmm. It was just a matter of, hey, it's part of the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden. And I read through it. And as soon as I finished reading through it, you know, I went on into the next book, which is about Pilate and Herod, and then went on into the next section, which was about Adam and Eve. I just read, I just blew through it. Right. But in 2015, it was different in the way the Father brought it to me because of the certain situations that I was in. I was getting a lot of trouble from family members and, and loved ones that was putting a lot of pressure on me. And it was actually changing me in a negative direction. I was actually remembering injuries and holding grudges against people and stuff. When my son Christian actually brought it to my attention and said something to the effect, of holding grudges and hit and the words that he said remembering injuries made me it prompted me to remember this shepherd of Hermes and I actually went in and read it again for the first time in a number of years and that's what it sank in mm -hmm. and then it was shortly after that that the father gave me the opportunity to hear that audio version over there on YouTube and that's when it really hit home. Yeah, I remember you were very excited about it. Yeah, because that audio version, you know, it may be a little bit corrupt, but it is dramatized and it did break it down to the point where I could understand this stuff way more clearly than just reading it in a book for myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying here, guys, is we have to be prepared to do what it says here, where it says, may speak these words in the ears of the saints. Here is the ministry part of this. This is a commission. You're not only hearing this for yourself and for your own family, but you're actually expected to go out and to teach this to other people. Right. And then you look right there where it says, that when thou shalt have heard and done them, they may be cleansed from their inequities. So by teaching this shepherd of Hermes, you're going to aid the other individuals to actually be cleansed of their inequities. Just like by you hearing this, you're being cleansed of your own personal inequities. But then to notice that part right there where it says, and thou together with them. Yeah. This is what we're talking about when we're saying by teaching this, we've learned way more than we have by reading it on our own. Yeah. Because by teaching this, we too are learning and our inequities are being cleansed away through the teaching process. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we've gone through and taught on every single verse out of this book. Yeah, maybe we should do it again. <laughs> yeah, maybe we will. If the Lord, Lord willing, we will. But we have still yet a few verses to go in, in visions before we can actually call ourselves complete. Right. So, let's get on with it. 96. Hear me, therefore, O my sons. I have bred you up in much simplicity and innocence and modesty for the love of God, which has dropped down upon you in righteousness, that you should be sanctified and justified from all sin and wickedness, but ye will not cease from your evil doings. So here is a message from the church. This is an uh, ex extremely important message for us to get. And, you know, surprisingly, a lot of people, when they hear this message, it actually sinks in. You know, I actually did a class on this called Message to the 144,000 or something like that. And, you know, even though we didn't have that many subscribers at the time, that chat, that video got a lot of attention. I believe it was because this message was hidden home here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm how we were bred up through simplicity, innocency, and modesty for the love of God, that we should be sanctified and justified from all our sins and wickedness. And we have to understand, our spirit wants to be there anyway. Yeah. Our spirit wants to be clean and pure. It is our human bodies that wants to be sinful and unclean. Yeah, our flesh is our 
tempter. Oh yeah, this, you're right. The flesh is definitely the tempter. Mm -hmm. Ninety-seven. Now therefore, hearken unto me, and have peace one with another, and visit one another, and receive one another, and do not enjoy the creatures of God alone. So here it is. It's, it, you see that last part where it said, "Do not enjoy the creatures of God alone." This, you know, is you know something really important to me because we are hunters here at the Hillbilly Homestead, and we try to make it a point every year, every season. Or even when we grow crops, that the very first things that we do when we harvest something is to give it away to the neighbors. Yeah. Whether it be a deer or whether it be a bushel of peas or whatever it is, we, we, based on what we see here in this verse, we're making sure that we are trying to share what it is that the Father is bringing to us. Mm -hmm. And when we're successful at giving it away the first time, Seems like the seasons always go a lot better. Yeah, it does. But then notice that part right there where it says have peace with one another and visit one another and receive one another. So we're not really expected to be isolated. We're expected to go out and minister to people. Yeah. Now this can be hard, especially when, you know, your neighbors and your friends are not treating you the way you think you should be treated. When they're persecuting you and, you know, treating you real badly, you know, it is then, I believe, when we get extra points when we go out and visit with them and spend time with them. Right. Mm -hmm. It actually tends to win them over to the point where at certain points they forget that they was being so bad towards you, <laughs> you know, in the first place. It's like, you know, you think it in the back of your mind. Do you remember what you said, you know? <laughs> But, you know, you, you, we're trained to forget injuries, so we go on as if nothing ever happened in the first place. All right. 98. Give freely to them that are in need, for some by too free feeding contract an infirmity in their flesh and do injury to their bodies, while the flesh of others who have no food withers away because they want sufficient nourishment. And their bodies are consumed. So this is extremely important. One of the most important things that we can do is be charitable towards each other. You know, and so you look here how it's saying that some people are fat because they don't share. Yeah. While other people, their bodies are withering away to nothing because they don't have enough food to eat. Mm -hmm. Well, how messed up is that? Yeah. Both of them are sick. Both of them are dying. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and but it's the one person who has an abundance that's not actually sharing with those that don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we've been in those situations where we, when we first um, came to the land that we're at, um, we didn't have a lot of food, and we were around people who necessarily didn't really want to share their food yeah <laughs> you know even though there were family members and it just i didn't understand it but um now i do now well I do. yeah I, I i believe a part of the understanding was when we got here we didn't recognize what food was food came from the grocery store mm -hmm. we didn't recognize that food grew on all of this land that right. we had newly purchased and we wasn't looking for it there yeah you know turns out Many of the things that we call weeds are actually edible. And another thing, if the Father would have allowed them to give us things, uh, we wouldn't have uh, went out and start harvesting and, and planting our own land. Yeah, definitely. You know, definitely. Like I said, we didn't know where food came from. And if they was constantly bringing us uh, stuff from the store, we would have thought that we were supposed to continually be dependent on the store for our food. But the fact that they was a little bit stingy up there and we was a little bit hungry mm -hmm. made us start trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. You know, what is this plant that's growing right here? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Is this edible? Right. You know, the, the world and, and what's, what's going to surprise people in this tribulation that kudzu is edible. Right. Kudzu is a food. Mm -hmm. You know, we think of it as an invasive plant that's taken over the world, seems like. You know, but over where they got this plant from, I think it was Japan or whatever, they actually eat kudzu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, when the, when the Walmart trucks stop running, <laughs> you know, a whole lot of people are going to figure out a whole lot of stuff that, you know, is edible that they never knew they could eat in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 99. Wherefore, this intemperance is hurtful to you, 
who have and do not communicate to them that won't, prepare for the judgment that is about to come upon you. Say contribute. Huh? Say contribute. Contribute. Wherefore, this intemperance is hurtful to you who have and do not communicate to them that you said won't. communicate? Yeah. It says communicate? What you got? All right, guys, we're having to go to the hardcover copies on here. Stacy's hardcover copy says communicate. What we're looking here says contribute, which I think is a better word. In my hardcover copy, it says communicate as well. But I believe contribute is actually a better word here. It says, wherefore, this intemperance is hurtful to you who have and do not contribute to them that want. So if we have something to share, if and we can share, but we don't take the opportunity to share, we're actually harming ourselves. Mm -hmm. Being charitable is absolutely necessary to make it into the kingdom of heaven, even almost as important as keeping the law in the first place. Yeah, I had that would be one of my um, things that I had to deal with. Uh, giving i was always well i was raised where you didn't necessarily share what you have if it's yours you keep it and they need to go out and get their own and i fortunately married someone who's very uh, generous and i didn't understand why i was having to be told that i need to share the things that i have uh, the little things that I have with other people uh, when I saw, especially when I saw them seem to me in, in my mind that they were misusing uh, mm -hmm. their funds and the things that I was giving to them. I didn't understand that. Yeah, but, you know, we're going to have to learn to be charitable because the father, a lot of times he will set us up and put us in a position where we can help people. So in some of those cases, they have misappropriated their funds just so their children or even they will need you to help them out, giving you the opportunity to gain the marriage that you need in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, being, now I see that I've learned, and it was a process, it was, you know, seemingly a long process, but I learned that being able to give um, not only benefits others, but it benefits me seem like more so. Yeah, it definitely benefits you more so. And that's why, you know, we're, we keep saying this. I hope you guys are hearing it, that you have to be charitable. You have to do charitable deeds. Stop and pick them people up that needs that ride. You see somebody walking on the road that needs a ride, pick them up. You see somebody that needs some food, give them some food. That person that's standing outside the liquor store asking for money, give them that money. Don't be judgmental. Give it to them. Be charitable. The Father gives us opportunities to be charitable, and it's necessary. We have to do that in order for our own salvation. Yeah, and I think it might be covered in the Book of Commands where... Uh, we are told it's not our responsibility to worry about what they're doing with it. You just give it to them. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah you're right. It is in commands. Mm -hmm. 100. Ye that are more eminent, search out them that are hungry, whilst the tower is yet unfinished. For when the tower shall be finished, ye shall be willing to do good, and shall not find any place in it. So listen how important this is. This is what this is saying right here, is that we got to seek out those people that are hungry. we got to go out and find those individuals, it's telling us to seek them out while the tower is yet unfinished, while this building process is still going on here, because, you know, when this tower is finished, then we're going to be looking for some charitable deeds to do. We're going to be looking for somebody to share stuff with. And the opportunity is not going to be available to us anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, that's a little bit to ponder on because it says right there, it says, For when the tower shall be finished, ye shall be willing to do good. Now, what does that mean? When the tower is finished, then all of a sudden you're going to be willing to do good. Whereas before you were stingy. But now that the tower is finished, you're looking for somebody to share stuff with and you don't have an opportunity. Is it talking about when this, when you're being shut out of the tower? Now that you shut out of the tower, now you want to do good to try to get back in. Maybe, but in. how would you even know that you've been shut out of the tower? How would you know? 
that I don't know. It's, what do you guys think? If you, if you understand what they're talking about, feel free to put it down there in the comment section. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I realize there's something there that I'm missing when it says, when the tower is finished, then you will be willing to do good and shall not find any place in it. Right. 101. Beware, therefore, ye that glory in your riches, lest perhaps they groan who are in want, and their sighing come up unto God. And ye be shut out with your goods without the gate of the tower. Now this is a people. This is a warning, guys. This is a warning. There's nothing worse that you can do to your chances of making it into this kingdom of heaven than having the opportunity to help somebody and not helping them, and they sit there and suffer and pray and say, "Oh Lord, why won't they help me?" Mm -hmm. Don't they know that I'm hungry? Don't they know that I'm in need? Don't they know that these kids are down here and need some food and they won't share? Why is it that they won't do this? Isn't that somewhere in the covenant where when the father says, when he hear uh, the widows and the children um, crying out, when they you do something to them and they cry out, he uh, uh, he's going to take vengeance upon you. Yeah, you know, those, you know, those, there are certain people that the father looks out for more than the others, the widows, the orphans, the poor, and yeah. the Levite, you know, the Father is looking out for those individuals more than he is for the rest of us that, you know, that, you know, like I said, the more eminent, those of us that have stuff, if we are given the opportunity to do good and we don't do it, that's equivalent to doing harm and doing bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, take that as a warning. Where it says, uh, lest perhaps they groan who are in want, and their sighing come up unto God, and ye be shut out with your goods without the gate of the tower. This is going to be the majority of the people in the world. They're going to be shut out without, you know, they're going to be shut out. With uh, their goods. With their goods. <laughs> they're going to have know. the riches, but they're not going to have the tower. They're not going to have the tower. Right. You, know, it, you know, a lot of them are happy with that. At least they think they are right now. But, yeah, right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still, that still points back to that verse 100. You know, where it's talking about when the tower is finished, they're going to be looking for, you know, something to do good. So these people that shut out of the tower with their goods are going to be looking for somebody to share with. Yeah. I'm wondering what's going to prompt them to look for somebody to share with all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. But let's go on. 102. Behold, I now warn you who are set over the church and love the highest seat. Be not ye like unto those that work mischief. So now it's talking about the ministers of the churches here. This is a direct warning for those who teach at the churches here and are set in the highest seats. And, you know, it says, um, be ye not like unto those that work mischief. Those that are teaching hypocrisy. Those that are teaching the doctrine of devils or the doctrine of man. Don't be like those who are leading people astray. Mm -hmm. 103. And they indeed carry about their poison in boxes, but ye contain your poison and infection in your hearts, and will not purge them, and mix your sense with a pure heart, that ye may find mercy with the great king. Yep. So, you know, whereas those who work mischief, he's comparing these ministers to those who are intentionally doing wrong. You know, they got their poison in boxes. But these ministers, they have their poison and, and infection in their hearts. But it's the same thing. They're walking around spreading it out and doing stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to, what does it say, purge and mix our senses with a pure heart that we might find mercy with the great king. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, again, this is talking to, what does it say, is those who are set over the church and in the high seats. Um Remember that, you know, the Bible, the scripture doesn't really speak to favorably to these individuals who are in these highest positions. You know, um, he often talks about how he brings his goodwill or his knowledge, his understanding to the modest and to the meek. Whereas a lot of these people in these seats and in these highest positions are extremely arrogant. Right. Mm -hmm. 104. Take heed, my children, that your dissensions deprive you not of your lives. How will ye instruct the elect of God when you yourselves want correction? Wherefore, admonish one another and be at peace among yourselves. And I, 
standing before your father may give an account for you unto the Lord. Yeah, so, you know, you have these ministers, you know, that are down there standing in these high positions. They are extremely haughty, extremely arrogant, you know, believing that the father has been, um, that he has shared only his gifts and his understanding on them. Whereas, you know, they're not really counted as the elect of all at all. They're not really they're not really counted as the elect at all. And the way you tell that is because they haven't been humiliated yet. Mm -hmm. The father's elect will not be haughty or arrogant or even be standing in the highest elevate highest parts of the church. When you look over there in the book of Revelation, you see when it's talking about the seven churches, there are actually two churches that doesn't have any fault against them. The Church of Philadelphia and the persecuted church. In both of those cases, you hear how they have actually been excommunicated from the church environment almost all together. Right. The persecutions is actually coming from the church. Yeah. And then when it, when it talks about the uh, Church of Philadelphia or the um, favorite church, it's talking about how those in the synagogue of Satan will be will worship at their feet. And understand who it is that has the favor of the Father. And when she had made an end of talking with me, the six young men that built came and carried her to the tower, and four others took up the seat on which she sat, and they also went away again to the tower. I saw not the faces of these, for their backs were towards me. So here it is, the end of their meeting that they had out there in the field. They've been had this long conversation, Hermes and this church lady sitting on this linen bench this whole time. And here we are at the end of this meeting and you see those six individuals that we know are the venerable angels who are charged with building up humanity to the point where they can go into this tower are now coming back to get her and they're carrying her away, taking her to the tower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have the lower level angels there who are coming and actually carrying her seat away and taking it away into the tower but notice right there how Hermes doesn't even see what they actually look like because they have their backs toward him yeah mm -hmm. all right so now that she's left and gone away Hermes is still trying to ask her questions right. we'll see right there we'll we'll pick it up right there in verse 106 in the next class because Hermes is like who is this lady that was just talking to me <laughs> right and then we're actually going to be introduced for the first time yeah. of the true star of this book. And that's the angel of repentance right. that's going to come in and going to start explaining to Hermes who she was. This is actually the shepherd. Yeah, this is the shepherd. Like, Yeah, a good point. In the book called The Shepherd of Hermes, you have Hermes, but Hermes has a shepherd over him that we're actually going to start talking about for the first time in verse 106 and on throughout the rest of this chapter right all right guys well we hope you're getting something out of these classes if so let us know <laughs> yeah leave a comment below we do still read all of the comments there's quite a bit of them so we don't respond to all of them but we do see what's going on down there in the comment section we do pay attention to how many likes we get and how many dislikes we get so you know Please give us feedback on how well we're doing on these classes and if you're actually getting anything out of it. Yeah, and if there's some things that you think that we should expound on, let us know. Yep. And with that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom. And if I can add, guys, I was actually convicted by this message while editing this video. And now I believe I understand clearly that verse 101 that was talking about those that will be shut out of the tower with their goods and how it is important for us to do charitable deeds now so not only do i want to reiterate this to you guys who are listening but i also want to reach out to any of you guys who are in need if there is any way that i can help just let me know send me an email send me a cash out request or whatever and i'll do what i can to help 
I believe that the completion of this tower is upon us. So those of you who can help others, I would suggest you do the same. And that's to look for people that you can actually do stuff for. Like I said, in this section of the book of Hermas, we have to seek out and find those people. Maybe not necessarily wait for them to come to us. But anyway, Shalom.